Review code provided by Bandai Namco. Thanks, Bandai Namco. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Beacon Gaming, the Daily Beacon's video game show where we spotlight a different indie game each and every week. Without further ado, let's get right into this week's game, Double Fine's Rad. Rad first came to my attention when it was announced in Nintendo's March Nindy Direct. Its 80s aesthetic paired with roguelike gameplay looked right up my alley, so it stayed somewhere in the back of my mind even when the rest of games media seemed to forget about it. But as we all know, a game cannot live on aesthetic alone. In fact, that aesthetic might have been to this game's detriment at some places. Let's look into it and find out. Rad takes place in a world where humanity has lived through not one, but two apocalypses, coined lovingly by the citizens of their world as the post-post-apocalypse. By the time the second apocalypse came around, we were totally like, seriously? At least that's what the Elder tells us. After the second Armageddon leaves humanity with little hope of survival, one lone teenager is given the task to venture out into the wasteland in order to restore humanity to its former glory. And when I say one teenager, I of course mean a countless, infinite number of teenagers. Seeing as how this game is a procedurally generated roguelike, chances are you'll die before completing the game at least once, if not many times. Every time your inevitable death occurs, your character will respawn back at the beginning of the game, ready to face their inevitable death once again. Now, Rat features not one, not two, but ten playable characters. Each one slightly more tubular than the last, forgive my 80s pun. With names like Valley Girl, Thrasher, and Glitch, you pretty much know what you're getting into with these guys. Aside from the opening cutscene and a few narrations from a mysterious disembodied voice, you won't be seeing much story from this game. Luckily, as is the case with most roguelikes, story will be the least of your worry in Rad. What we can glean from our surroundings, however, is that at least one of the two apocalypses that took place happened around the 1980s. 80s themed crap is absolutely everywhere, with CRT televisions lining the landscape and cassette tapes being used as currency. This paired with the game's neon color scheme gives Rad a pretty appealing look. While the game's over-the-top 80s aesthetic definitely works for its benefit for much of the game, some parts of it definitely hurt the experience, or are at least a little bit annoying. The game's announcer can get incredibly annoying as he yells LOADING and PAUSED every time the game loads or you press pause. PAUSED! Other times, however, he made me laugh out loud, such as one time when I died and he exclaimed, YOU ARE NOT RAD. Good god, how did he know I'm not rad? Story be damned, this game lives and dies by its procedurally generated gameplay. Every time you venture out into the wasteland is different than the last. The basic goals and gameplay loops, however, are the same. You progress through each level by activating respirators, weird face statue things that somehow hold the key to restoring the planet. Sounds easy enough, right? WRONG! Hordes of disgusting mutants and valleys of radioactive waste stand between you and humanity's salvation. Luckily, before you set out on your quest, you are given a baseball bat. And the ability to absorb radiation and use it to gain abilities that will help you fight off these foes. I guess the baseball bat just wasn't good enough. By the power of the menders, you must be remade. Your body will now absorb and use the toxins, the rads, of the fallow, instead of being devoured by it. You will need this. Should you fall, this weapon will transport itself back here, so that others may continue the quest in your place. You set out in the morning. The abilities you gain through radiation are random, and boy are there lots of them. From a flaming, detachable skull that you can throw as a bomb, to a literal firearm which allows you to shoot fireballs, it feels as if the possibilities are endless. Of course, they aren't literally endless, but it sure feels that way. 
The core gameplay loop of Rad is a ton of fun. I never really grew tired of running through the wasteland. Since you are basically doing the same thing over and over again, however, it makes playing the game for longer than a few hours at a time a little tiresome. One of the worst things about Rad is its graphics. I was taken aback at how ugly the character models looked all up close during the opening cutscene. Luckily, this didn't really translate to gameplay, but they definitely didn't start things out on a good foot. Since I played the game on Nintendo Switch, I was able to experience the game three different ways. On a 1080p TV, a 4K TV, and on the Switch monitor itself during handheld gameplay. The game looked best, obviously, on my 4K TV. Things looked crisp and clear, and I didn't notice many problems at all. However, when I took my Switch to my 1080p lit TV in my living room, it was a completely different story. The picture looked much less polished and pretty pixelated. Now, while it didn't look terrible per se, it was definitely noticeable. As I'm sure you can infer, the handheld gameplay on the Switch definitely looked the worst. It runs on a 720p monitor, and it looked even worse on this small screen than on everything else. But it was still playable and on the go, and that was pretty cool. The game always played on a steady frame rate, so hey, I'll give it that. One of the great things about procedurally generated roguelikes such as Rad is the insane amount of game time you can get out of them if you really enjoy them. If you want to, there's no reason you couldn't get hundreds of hours of different experiences in this game without growing tired of it. While you're much more likely to get far less than that, chances are you'll still get a ton of time out of this game. And hey, for only $20, Rad feels like a steal. You'll definitely be getting your bang for your buck if you decide to pick this one up. Overall, Rad is a great experience. The gameplay loop is incredibly fun, its aesthetic is generally appealing, and even though its graphics are a little less than desirable depending on where you play the game, they get the job done and don't look terrible. At $20, I give Double Fine and Bandai Namco's Rad a big ol' recommend. If you enjoy roguelikes and anything about this game looks appealing to you, I definitely think you should check it out. I will say that Double Fine's Rad is pretty rad. <laughs> Excuse the pun.